Hi, my name is Dan Svoboda, and today I want to talk to you guys about color grading your footage in Final Cut Pro 10 with Chromatic from Cormelt, and specifically grading footage that has a color chart in it. I've already applied a Chromatic log grade to this clip. The reason I'm using log grade is because I shot this footage in log on a Canon C100. And this ensures that the footage has been converted to Rec. 709 before we start doing any of our effects. I'm going to click the camera LUT button and I'm going to apply the Canon log to Rec. 709 LUT. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start to evaluate our exposure. And to do that, we are going to use these four swatches on the color chart. And I am going to draw a box around these little swatches using a draw mask filter from Final Cut Pro 10. Once I've isolated those swatches, I could clearly see in the RGB parade where those colors lie in terms of IRE and how I need to affect the image in order to get proper exposure. The first thing I like to do is I like to get my highlights where they need to be, which this swatch right here should be pure white, which should be touching 100 IRE on a waveform monitor. So I'm going to add the lift gamma gain controls in chromatic, and I'm just going to take my gain and I am going to push it up until the first channel hits 100. And that seems to me to be the green one, which means I need to elevate the blue a little bit, just a scotch. And I need to elevate the red a little bit as well. Now, if you look, all three of these channels are equally touching 100 IRE, which means we've achieved a white balance. The next thing we want to do is we want to do our midtones. And this is 18% gray, which should sit at about 40 IRE on the waveform monitor. So I'm going to bring it up just a little bit, not a whole lot, but the red needs to be even with the rest of them. So just kind of like that. And then the next thing I'm going to focus on is the shadows, which is this black swatch right here, which should sit at zero IRE on the waveform monitor. So I'm going to take my lift and I'm going to bring it down just a scotch. Now I'm going to disable my draw mask and you could take a look at the before and after. Pretty big difference. The next thing we're going to use this chart for is to evaluate color and how our camera is actually seeing the colors. We're going to turn on our draw mask again and we're going to reposition it a little bit. We're going to put it around these little swatches right here, these little color chips. And then we're going to switch our scope to the vector scope. Each of these colors is represented in the vector scope. And you want to make we want to make sure that each of these traces is lined up specifically with these little um, with these little boxes to make sure that all the colors are being displayed properly. So to do that, I'm going to use the HSL curves inside chromatic. One of the things that separates chromatic from other color grading tools is the fact that you that the canvas inside Final Cut is kind of live with this plugin. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If you look over here on the vector scope, cyan is not lined up with where cyan should be. Cyan should be right with this little box and you can see it's off. So what I'm going to do well in the hue when I'm in the hue curve is I'm going to take my cursor on the cyan chip and I'm just going to pull it down until it reaches straight at, straight at the cyan box. Then I'm going to go up to blue, line that back up, and you could see that my curve is adjusting every time I do that. I'm going to do the same with magenta, with red, with yellow, and with green. Now that we have all the colors kind of lined up, the thing we want to also want to keep in mind is that they should have the same level of saturation. So again, I'm going to keep using the HSL curve, but I'm going to switch over to a different curve. I'm going to use the saturation versus hue. And just like we just previously did, I'm going to use my cursor to adjust these saturation levels. So cyan is very high. And I'm going to pull that back. And you can see it moving on the vector scope. That seems to be affecting green, so I'm going to push that up to match cyan, the trace. I'm going to pull back on blue a little bit. Magenta's probably good, or at least a little bit good. Then pull back on red and pull back on yellow. Okay, let's see how that affected our image with, by turning the mask off. 
I think that that desaturated it a little bit too much. So I'm going to add a color balance EV effect inside chromatic, and I'm just going to give it a little bit more saturation. Just a little bit, something like that. I like how that's looking, but I think that the skin tones, uh, they don't quite look right. Let's check. I'm going to turn on my draw mask, and I'm going to move it to his face face just like this and they are leaning a little bit towards red this line right here on the vector scope should be where the skin tones fall on and it's just a little bit red and probably maybe a scotch too saturated so I'm going to use the replace color effect to um, change that I'm going to select my chromatic effect in the inspector and I'm gonna select this value right here that I feel like might be my problem and then I'm gonna just pull it so that it's better on that flesh tone line just like this and then I'm gonna turn my mask off that looks a lot better before and after you can see how it kind of pulled that magenta right out of the right out of the skin tone. And then the before image and after all of our effects. Thanks so much for watching. And you could see how having just a little bit of foresight to put one of these color checkers uh, in front of your camera before you start shooting can really help you in the color grading process. And also some of the features that Chromatic has that, all, that very fluidly allow you to adjust image, like being able to um, interact with the canvas and the colors in the canvas affecting your curves, I think is super, super helpful and very fluid when you're working. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.